So after the last video where I discussed how to create equations quickly using the power of prefix shortcut keys, I discovered I can actually record the on-screen keyboard this way, so you can actually look at how I type the equations this way. So I decided to reshoot several of the demonstrations so you can see more clearly how I utilize these prefix shortcut keys to create a lot of different styles and formats of equations. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put the link down below. There I'll show you how to set up all these shortcuts, but here I'll just demonstrate what key to press after you set it up. So just a quick recap, in a default Microsoft Word, usually to insert the simple equations just like what I did, the default shortcut key is Control equal sign, uh, not to be confused with command. So control is this key over here, command is this, whereas in Windows you use alt equals. However, the point of creating prefix keys, which is basically the first part of a shortcut you type in, followed by another key press, this way you can vastly expand the amount of shortcuts you can create, which really expands the power of Microsoft Word. Um, as I motivated last time, as soon as you try to type a lot of different formatting and you want to create shortcuts for a lot of frequently used formattings, you would very quickly run out of combinations on your keyboard. However, with the ability of prefix, you can increase that amount by many folds. Just a quick calculation of how much more keyboard shortcuts you can fit in with the use of prefix. Let's say you can only use command and the other 26 alphabet letters. So you have 26 shortcuts. You can do command A, command B, command C, all the way to command Z. However, with a prefix, you can do command A, A, command A, B, command A, C, command A, D, and then move on to command B, A, command B, B, etc. And suddenly you have increased your keyboard shortcuts from 26 options to 26 squared options, which is 676. So even without the other options like control options and shift, you have 676, not counting numbers that you can fit in. That is a lot of keyboard shortcuts, probably more than we can remember. And if that's not enough for you, utilizing the other function keys as well, that would really, really increase a lot of shortcuts that you can create. So just a quick recap um, to create a shortcut, you can go to Tools and go down to Customize Keyboard, or uh, you can set up a shortcut for creating shortcuts, which is my favorite part. And then go down to all commands, or you can look at a certain category. I usually just go to all commands and type in a few keywords that I want to search. For example, I want to insert an equation that is under the command of equation insert. As you can see, I have recorded the current key, which is command equal equal. Um, let me remove it quickly to show you how you can create it. So I can press command equal and then press equal again. For the second equal, you can let go of the command or you can keep pressing it, it doesn't matter. I like to keep pressing it and just do double equals. So just to do it in speed, you can see what I really do is that. Now let me reassign that and save this. And now I can basically hold command as you can see on the on-screen keyboard, hold on to equal and then click that again. Now this will insert the equation. In real speed, that looks like this. All I have to do is hold down and then I double tap equals sign. So this is just marginally more work than the original control equal sign. However, it allows me, for example, to do command equal one. As you can see, this will give me equations. And in speed, it looks like this. And I can actually just type a lot of num create a lot of numbered equation this way. And I have for command equal two, for example, as I demonstrated many times before, this gives spaced equations if your equations are especially cramped. And I'm running out of space, so let me delete some of these. Just to show that, also reiterate that all the numberings do work properly, let me refresh this page. Uh, in Word, it's basically the command of update all. I'll go through all these functions in the future video, um, but you can see I can reorder these and also um, I can have the equations left justified. So as you can see, these equations are less justified or I have made the fourth one uh, where the equations are justified at a equal sign. Now, uh, let me also show you a few other possibilities. In a future video, I'll show you how to set up all these numberings, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, but just to show you other prefix keys that I have set up. Another one that I find myself start to use a lot is just coloring, to color certain words. For example, if I want to color some of these words without ever leaving my keyboard, I can just navigate over here and use my 
the shortcut key as explained above over there to color all these words. If I don't want them, I can revert back to uh, K and that now everything will go back to black. Unfortunately for the last one for black, uh, B is taken for blue, so I had to resort to something else. Uh, so I used the last letter K to, for myself to remember. So uh, this is another very useful way, just to show you again, you can do this. And uh, by the way, so here I first click the preset, I can let go of everything. You can wait for a long time before you press the suffix. I'm not sure how long, I haven't really stress tested this, but just to show you, you can click on all the presets and then click G for green. So you don't really have to rush to press the suffix after you press the prefix. And finally, uh, another one that I commonly use is creating tables. I don't create, I don't use a lot of different table styles. The only two that I have is a simple table and a shaded table. The reason is because in typing math, a lot of the times I want to box important equations like this. Sometimes I want to shade important equations like this. This one I have probably have to um, readjust my settings a little bit. But if you work a lot with tables, you can actually keep going on and creating a lot of different versions where you can have a shortcut for creating a table with 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three or 4x5. The sky's the limit. And finally, as far as I know, you cannot go crazy with a prefix. As far as I know, you can only have one prefix. For example, I want to create a prefix for this. I cannot do, let's say, control shift a a and continue with that. At most, there's one prefix and one suffix. And just another word of warning with prefix keys, if you have assigned, for example, this, as you can see, it tells me it's currently assigned to equation insert. I can no longer assign just the prefix as a keyboard shortcut. Let's say I want to create a shortcut for file check in. I have no idea what that does actually. Um, apparently it checks in a document. Um, if suddenly one day I have the idea of creating the shortcut command equal for this particular command, be aware when this pops up and it shows that it's a prefix key, do not click assign. If I do click assign, it will immediately erase all the other shortcuts that I have created for different commands that starts with these prefix because it will basically override and no longer treat this as a prefix, it will treat this as a direct shortcut for this particular command. So just be aware of that, I'm just going to escape out of this. So hopefully this illustrates even clearer how the keys are pressed and how to utilize prefix keys in a very speedy way if you need in the future. And if you want to see me explain how to set up this shortcut for inserting a simple equation, I'll put the link to that video down below in the descriptions. In that video, I've not only showed you how to create a shortcut for inserting a simple equation, but also several tips including how to create a shortcut for inserting shortcuts. So uh, check out that video. Uh, if you like this video, leave this a like. And if you have any comments, any further tips or shortcuts regarding this, or if you have any suggestions for future videos, put your suggestions in the comments as well. In the next video, I'll go into more details into creating these automatically updating numbered equations and also how to type using Unicode math in Word which is another form of math input similar to LaTeX, but much more convenient and intuitive than LaTeX. So stay tuned for those videos coming up. Until then, have a great day.